The Goldie's Backyard Offset is known for its insane cooking capacity, and I'm gonna put that capacity to the ultimate test by cooking seven briskets at the same time. That's one whole 15 pound brisket over the maximum capacity Eminem states on their website. This is going to be the hardest backyard cook I've done so far, but I have some tricks up my sleeve to hopefully help me pull this cook off. Okay, so on the table right now, I have seven Angus Choice briskets from Sam's Club, and because I have so many briskets to get through, I am not gonna be super detailed on the trim job but at the same time I'm gonna do the best speed job as I possibly can so I'm mixing it up here a little bit today I usually use a six inch boning knife when I'm trimming briskets but today I'm using a 10 inch grate and slicer and that's because a couple months ago I went to bar a barbecue in Montgomery Texas and the owner Cooper was trimming briskets with one of these and it just looked really cool I wanted to try it out for myself and I did shoot a barbecue story documentary over there and I actually just finished editing it I usually say this all the time because because you know, I'm getting better every time making one of these documentaries, but this one is seriously the best one I've ever made. It might be out even before this video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Dude, these briskets are crazy. All right, time for seasoning. So this is just Lowry's pepper and salt. I just mix it all together because again, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can because we got a long cook ahead of us. All right, now for the fun part. We got to figure out how to get these briskets onto this backyard smoker. So to help me figure out how to orient the briskets into the smoker for the best chance of success, I called Johnny, also known as Jerby Barbecue here on YouTube. First reason is because he's one of the owners of Goldie's. He's one of the ones who designed this pit. So if there's anyone who knows how to cook a bunch of briskets inside of the Goldie smoker, it's gonna be Johnny. And the second reason is because he actually did a very similar experiment to this, except he cooked eight briskets in the Goldie's offset smoker. But in his videos, his eight briskets, they ended up using for the service at Goldie's so he didn't slice into it on camera to show you what the briskets looked like on the inside. But we're absolutely going to slice into briskets in this video and really break down and analyze each slice of the brisket from the point to the burnt end to the flat so that we can see if this smoker can really cook seven briskets perfectly. Anyways, Johnny told me to just configure them in a way to stay as far away from the firebox opening on the right side of the pit and then put the water pan between the hole and the closest brisket. And that's because right out of this hole, straight down this line, is where the hot spot on this smoker is. So if you didn't know, every offset smoker has a hot spot. And that's pretty obvious since, you know, the construction of an offset smoker is you have the fire on one end and then the exhaust on the other end. So of course, the side where the firebox is is always going to be hotter. But I am curious to see how aggressive the hot spot is on the Goldie smoker because again, we're not getting a direct heat from the fire. Instead, there's a pipe that separates the firebox from the cook chamber. So I'm curious on how badly it's going to torch the brisket. For even more data, I'm gonna use my Typer Sink on the brisket that's closest to the firebox because the Typer Sink not only measures the internal temperature of the brisket, but can also do the ambient temperature. And I'm really curious on exactly how hot the heat is coming out of that pipe. We'll go probe one for this brisket. All right, so I currently have the pit rocking at about 200 degrees and I'm gonna just coast at 200 degrees pretty much for the first three to four hours of the cook just to let the briskets kind of shrink up so I can reorganize them again. I think that the key for this cook is just being able to stay on top of the briskets and shuffle them around, making sure that we're staying out of that hot spot zone. So the pit's getting up to temperature. It's currently at 175 and on the Typer sink, I'm getting an ambient temperature reading of 245. So I think 200 degrees Fahrenheit is gonna be about the magic number to make sure that we don't absolutely torch that front brisket. But I guess we'll find out in a couple hours. Okay, briskets have been on for about four-ish hours. Let's go ahead and check out the briskets. Okay, so pretty uh, nice even color on all of them, it seems. So yeah, pretty uh, common look for briskets when you're running it like super low and smoky. Also, this side of the brisket is like pretty dang crispy. Um, honestly speaking, things are not looking too good for uh, this brisket, but we're gonna try and uh, move things around to get it out of this uh, danger zone. So 
so as you can see uh, the damage from being right there in the hot spot is um, yeah looking pretty critical but um, at this point I'm gonna go ahead and increase the temperature to around 250 because um, yeah I've been cooking briskets for four hours and at this rate this these briskets are gonna be done in like two days so we got to get the temperatures up yeah um, pretty rough start for this cook but uh, we'll see so at about the six hour mark, the brisket that was closest to the fire was looking pretty terrible actually. The bark looked really weird on the point side. It was almost like it was in the stall, but the bark hadn't set yet. So it just looked all melty and um, kind of disgusting. But at about eight hours, the crust had completely set. And also relocating that brisket that was closest to the fire, close to the door, really helped it. Because those burn marks that were once hard really softened up once the bark set and the brisket really started to sweat during the stall. And that really revived my hope for this experiment. So currently I'm getting close to the 13 hour mark on this cook and since first rearranging the briskets I haven't really done much. I've been tipping the briskets and kind of been inching the briskets closer and closer to the center as they've been shrinking down from the moisture loss. But anyways like I said we're at about the 13 hour mark and some of the briskets are getting really close to wrap. Bark is nice. Set. Open up the fat. It's nice and yellow. All right, 16 hours later, and the last briskets are finally coming off the smoker. And this is the one that was closest to that hot spot at the beginning of the cook. As you can see by the typer sink sticking out of it. So I'm gonna pull this out for a second and then get this wrapped up. So as you can see, I have two briskets here, not seven. Five of the briskets I rested and then I put them in the fridge because my friend is gonna use them for an event later on. And for the two briskets in front of me, uh, the first one, as you can see, the one with the Typher sink, it was the one that was the closest to the firebox at the beginning of the cook, right in that hot spot. And this second brisket is one that I picked out um, that I thought was the best of the seven based on the following criteria. So out of all the other briskets, this was the one that I thought was the best out of the seven. So first of all, the sides of the brisket it still have like a little bit of like soft tenderness to it. I think the bark on the outside looks the best. It also just has a really good feel on the point and the flat. And one of the most important things is that it was one of the ones that was the least affected by uh, the weird skin effect. Now that weird skin thing is something that I've only experienced one other time and that was when I was cooking on my Weber kettle. But first of all, what is the weird skin thing I'm talking about? So my theory is that this happens when you cook a brisket for too low for too long. Basically that top layer of fat gets way too dry before the brisket hits the stall that dry skin doesn't like melt down with the rest of the fat and then you're left with this like hard shell um, on the outside of the brisket normally i'll go super low and smoky for like an hour or two but going sub 200 for like four plus hours is crazy because of that it took me like 16 hours to finish these briskets but even though these two briskets represent the worst and the best briskets out of the seven you got to take that with a grain of salt i don't know what it was specifically with this cook but throughout the entire thing like i was just not feeling it like the briskets were looking strange throughout the cook they weren't feeling right during the stall and after the stall but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and cut into these briskets starting with the best one I can see that the meat is like really tender at the bottom, but yeah, like brisket is definitely way drier than I'm used to. So here's the flat. Um, the fat render looks kind of weird. I can definitely see that line where the weird skin is, but also if you look right here, it looks like the fat isn't completely rendered. So I'm thinking when that skin developed, it kind of inhibited the fat from completely rendering. And that's one of the reasons why I cooked this brisket so long is that I noticed that the fat just like wasn't rendering right. <laughs> Here's the burnt end. Yeah, it looks a little drier than I'm used to the burnt end looking. And when I say dry, it's not, I mean, you can see it. It's not like completely bone dry, but I know the brisket should be like way juicier than this. Yeah, this is such a strange brisket because normally when I overcook a brisket, it gets like really mushy. But as you can see, you can still see the integrity of each of the muscle fibers are still intact. It just looks a little dry. And outside of that weird skin that I was talking about earlier, the fat renders really good on the point slice. But that makes sense since the point is facing the fire for most of the cook. All right, the worst brisket. 
I'm liking the way this one is feeling better than the other brisket off the bat. Wow. Okay, this is just a comment about the surface of the brisket. But what's crazy is I actually don't see the weird skin thing on this brisket. I'm not seeing any of that uh, white fat at the bottom. Still overcooked and a little dry, but yeah, fat render is definitely better on this brisket. Now that I'm seeing the slice, the fat render is better than the last one, but not perfect by any means. Yeah, I'm not in love with the way that the seam fat rendered. It looks like seam fat when you cook a brisket like way too hot. Burnt end. Okay, I'm gonna taste both and then give you my thoughts starting with the best brisket. Okay, first of all, on both of the briskets, a little bit too much smoke flavor. I think going 200 and below 200 for four hours just like oversaturated both briskets. It's not enough putting flavor at all. It's just a little bit like more smoky than I'm used to. I am using hickory. So maybe if I did this experiment with a milder wood like white oak, it probably would have taken care of that smoked out flavor I'm getting. But I will say that the brisket that was exposed to the firebox at the beginning of the cook tastes significantly better than the other one. Texturally speaking, from the point and the flat, like it was like so much more tender and it was actually more juicy too. And I'm also getting that nice sweet profile on the fat cap of this hot spot brisket. With the other brisket, not only is it drier, but that weird um, skin thing that developed, it kind of like tasted burnt and like a little bit acrid. If there was a sweet profile on this brisket, it was completely masked by that weird skin. I think because I babied that hot spot brisket so much during the cook, I ended up sacrificing the other six briskets, leaving me with seven mediocre briskets. I can honestly say that this brisket that wasn't in the hot spot tastes worse than the brisket I made on the $400 Pecos last week when I had the Goldie Smoker go head to head against the Pecos in a brisket showdown. So make sure to watch that video on your screen right now if you haven't, and I'll see you guys over there.